Are you looking to get into resin 3D printing on a budget? This longer orange 10 might be just what you're looking for. A little while ago, I released my long-term review of the Priopoli Moai Resin 3D Printer. It was a sophisticated machine and a strong performer, but at US $1,300, that price makes it a significant investment. The Moai is a laser-based system, and in that video, I mentioned that I was reviewing a smaller, cheaper, entry-level LCD-based machine. Which brings us to this longer 3D Orange 10. Priced at only $229 US, it's about the cheapest you'll find to get into this form of printing. I'll cut to the chase. This printer has been reliable and it produces really, really good prints. But before you jump forward with your hard earned cash, there's more things to discuss. So let's start by looking at the specs of the printer and exactly how it works. Firstly, the price. That $229 is exclusive to Amazon. Funnily enough, the official store has it for more expensive, but at least it'll ship to more countries. Nice features of this printer are the color touchscreen and the bundled slicing software that we'll look at in more detail later on. One of the reasons this printer is cheaper is because of the small build volume, much smaller than the Moai. So if you're new to resin printing, you're probably wondering how this thing works. Well, the main difference is the resin. The resin from these printers is a liquid until you expose it to light, in which case it goes solid. The printer's light source is a UV LED shining through an LCD. On top of that sits a vat with a clear plastic sheet on the bottom and when that's in place we pour our resin into the vat on top of the LCD. The only moving part on these printers is the z-axis and the build platform. The slicing software still divides our object into vertical layers so it can be built up one by one. This time lapse is of the Moai but it works exactly the same way with the resin underneath and the object being cured one layer at a time and pulled up from the build platform until it's done. Now the morning I was due to record this review, Joel from 3D Printing Nerd released a video on this exact same printer. If you're looking at buying a printer like this, then that's a good thing, because it gives us more sample prints to look at and a second perspective. In his video, Joel did a great job showing us his step-by-step -step process, as well as discussing safety. So I think I'll start this video by doing the same. The resin that these printers use is bad news in terms of safety. It's bad to breathe in, it's bad to get on your skin, and it's particularly bad to get in your eyes. The IPA that we use as a cleaning solvent is also hazardous. Previously with these printers, when I was having a batch of failed prints and putting in a lot of time trying to fix it, I started to feel quite ill. To avoid the fumes, I moved my whole setup inside a built-in cupboard with an exhaust fan up top. This gives me a nice place away from the family to store all of the resins. And I have my gloves, spatulas, paper towel, everything away from the rest of my printing setup where it can't get mixed up. I can also store safely my ultrasonic cleaner for post-processing and a UV lamp that I use for the final curing of the object after printing. You can always, of course, use the sun to achieve this same thing. For only a couple of bucks, these big floppy storage containers are a must. You do everything messy inside these, and when you're done, take them out into the sun, everything will harden, flake off, and you can throw it in the bin. Okay, onto my experience with this printer and its performance. The printer arrived well packaged and required very little assembly. The only thing you have to put together is the orange acrylic cover. It simply slots together in the corners and then uses two clear rubber bands to retain its shape. The build platform also needs to be leveled, but once again, this is super easy. You simply loosen the leveling screws, home the machine down to the bottom, and then tighten them again, and everything will be perfectly flat. On the SD card, as well as some test prints and the software, there's an instruction manual where all of this is illustrated step by step. One thing to check for is making sure the FEP sheet on the bottom of the vat is clean. As these machines use light to cure a photopolymer, any dirt and dust in the way might produce print artifacts. I started out doing three test prints from the LCD, starting with these three skulls. This is surely a play on speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil, and I have to say this is a really solid piece. Normally these models are produced hollow, but this one isn't and it's quite hefty. This test print is beautifully formed. With lots of little details, it seems to have come out flawlessly on the first go. In fact, the only drama I had with this one was removing it from the build platform. I believe I was meant to use a piece of paper to create a little space, and because I didn't, this thing was really firmly in place. I needed a scraper and a rubber mallet to get it loose. I next did another SD card print, and I went for this vase here, and once again, it has exquisite detail. 
Surrounding the surface is this diamond mesh that doesn't go the whole way through. And this is beautifully formed. You might notice some discoloration on my print. That's simply from the presence of blue cast in my cleaning station. So please don't let that sway your opinion because I can't find any problems with this whatsoever. Next up, I did this zombie hunter head and I had success as well. The first thing to notice on this model is that there's holes in the base and that it's hollow and this saves on resin cost dramatically. Beyond that, all of the features have been beautifully formed once again in stunning detail. These printers do still use a layer by layer process and on surfaces that are close to flat, you can just make it out under the right lighting. So the prints off the SD card were working really well, but to give this thing a proper test, I needed to do some of my own slicing and preparation. So let's have a look at the bundled software that comes with this printer. So this is the bundled software that comes with the printer and the sequence is pretty easy. We just go from left to right. I've already hit the plus to load an STL. And once we select our model, the next one along will let us translate, rotate and scale. All pretty straightforward. After this, we have a fix tab for fixing defects. This one is fine, so there's no options there. After that, we have our support generation tool. You can just click generate for automatic supports. And then to edit those individually, we can come to edit. We can see all of these pink dots and that's where it's going to apply support. We can either click in new places to add them or click on old ones to remove them. When we're done, we click save and the support will be regenerated. When we're happy, we come to the slice tab and then we can change our layer thickness, a plate layer, which adds a big solid layer underneath to help with the adhesion and finally click slice. The slicing is pretty much instantaneous and we get this nice preview underneath here where we can check for any floating segments. Our very last step is to save the actual file to go into the printer. You can see we have a couple of inbuilt profiles for different layer heights. You can also add your own recipe if you're using another brand of filament that needs slightly different parameters. When we're done, we click save job and a folder will be created where you had your STL with two preview pictures and finally the file that goes onto the SD card of the printer. All of my printing was done with the software on the default settings. That means a 0.05 layer height and no changes to the resin profile. First up, I did the ubiquitous 3D Benchy. Now I printed this one completely flat on the build platform. All of the fine details are formed as you would expect from a resin printer. And traditionally these printers aren't as strong when you've got flat surfaces. In fact, on the sides of this, we have what looks like zebra stripes from an FDM printer. It's a little bit of a mystery to me. I think it's maybe something to do with anti-aliasing where the part gets a little bit thicker as it goes towards the front. If you've got a definitive answer, please leave it in the comments. On a roll, I decided to do this T-Rex skull and jaw, and it's probably the favorite thing I've printed on this machine. I printed this in the orientation of which the SDLs download, and without any support structures, it had no trouble adhering to the build platform and completed successfully. All of the little details are beautifully formed. Each little tooth is separate and has a pointy edge, and the contours over the skull and crevices look amazing too. However, there's once again some surface artifacts on the side walls, similar to what I saw on the Benchy. When I reviewed the Moai, one of my test prints was some chain mail, because I wanted to see if it had the right tolerances to do print in place designs. This time I chose something a little bit weirder. This articulated baby is right from Uncanny Valley. I rotated it and scaled it down a fair bit, and this was the first object I did that was completely held to the build platform by support posts. Fortunately, it didn't fail, but I guess it shrunk it down to the point where it no longer articulates. I can't get any of the pieces to release, and if I do, they'll probably just snap, so I'll leave it there. Everything had been a great success so far, but I thought I'd better do some printing that was targeted to the type of items that people like to do on these printers. Next up, I decided to do some jewelry. A colleague at my school runs a great program where students design rings to be resin printed and then investment cast. So what you're seeing here are student designs done in Onshape. The print finished without any errors. All of the features are fully formed. The only downside are the little pucks and a little bit of distortion where the support posts were touching. These printers are really good at doing things that are small. So I got my daughter with me, we wanted to Thingiverse and we picked out some furniture for her dollhouse. The design of pretty small things has been on Thingiverse for many years now and she has lots of great designs like this. Everything is easy to print, separated into two halves to avoid overhangs and these turned out great on the resin printer too. Probably the only complaint I have about any of these prints is where I accidentally glued the wrong base onto the wrong chair and had to rip it off and left a super glue mark behind. 
The last thing that's typical that people want to print on these type of printers are tabletop miniatures. I picked out this 28mm model and I'm pretty happy with how the details have been formed. I don't think they're quite as good as what the Moai produced, but for this price point, it's hard to argue with the results. Like some of my other prints, the only imperfections are the little puck marks left behind where I've had to snap off some support. So there's my range of printing, time for my summary and we'll start with the pros. Number one has to be the print quality. For the price, this printer produces extremely good prints. And when you've got things this small, it's far beyond the capabilities of FDM printing. There are those weird side surface artifacts on some of my prints, but I imagine that can be fixed for free with a software update. Next up is the ease of use. It was very easy to put together. I was printing within around 10, 15 minutes and the software is really good too. Everything is handled in the one program. Pretty much the only thing missing is the ability to hollow out your model to preserve resin on thicker parts. Quite often with these printers, you're relying on a bunch of third-party software applications that you branch together. Maybe the first one to clean up the model, the second one to add supports, the next one to do the slicing and so forth. It's really nice having all of this within the one piece of software. And it's also really nice seeing the preview on the LCD screen. So you know you're selecting the right model with accurate information on how long it's going to have left. Next up, reliability. And this isn't a long-term review. In fact, I've used most of the half a liter of resin that came with this printer, but I've had absolutely zero problems so far. One of the good things about these machines is they only have one moving part and that's the Z-axis. It's true that the UV LED and LCD can eventually wear out, but on equivalent printers, such as the one held Duplicator 7, this is pretty easy to replace and not that expensive. Another pro is the versatility of the resin you can use. There's no proprietary resin here, so you should be able to switch to anything that cures with the same wavelength of light. All right, onto the cons, and honestly, there aren't many. The main one being the cons that come inherently with resin 3D printing. Like a lot of hobbies, you need additional equipment beyond the base machine. And I would encourage you to learn from my example and place your machine and all of the equipment you need somewhere right out of the way where you won't be affected by the fumes and risk your own health. Now my next con, if you do that, won't be really a factor and that is the noise of the cooling fan. It's definitely louder than what you'll find on other 3D printers. Okay, final thoughts. If you're looking to get into resin 3D printing on a budget, this one is gonna be a winner. You can't really argue with the results for the money. And you do have a range of resins that you can use in future. So you're not stuck with some really expensive option there either. But in Joel Telling's video on 3D Printing Nerd, he made a very important point. Don't dive into this as a beginner and expose yourself to the implications that come from the resin, the IPA, the fumes, getting on your skin, all of those things. Please, if you enter this hobby, be prepared, get a really good setup that looks after your health and do it the right way. If you're willing to do all of that, then based on my results of my test prints, then I'm happy to recommend this printer. If you've got any thoughts on resin printing, whether you think it's worth it or not, please leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.